Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be part two of my radio go bag uh, kind of series that I've been doing. Um, now this video was supposed to have gone up last weekend. Unfortunately, uh, when I went to film the part two, uh, went up to Manchester with Lewis to film, um, there was a tight, slight technical issue and we lost all the audio. We lost the whole lot. Um, so I'm having to redo it today. So today I don't have Lewis with me, but I do have Peppa with the dog with me, who's going to be helping me film this, I think. She might be getting in the way, I'm not sure. Right, okay, so we talked about um, a bag that I can have. It's not designed to be an emergency bag. It's not designed to be something for bugging out or any catastrophic events happening. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose for a go bag for me, for the, uh, the comms bag, is when we go away on holiday, when we go for weekends away or trips, um, it's just nice to have a bag of radios to give me the two-way communications uh, that I like to have. So um, if you want to uh, give a friend who's traveling in convoy on a campsite, whatever, a radio to have for comms, you can do. And it's a bag that effectively is going to be complete with everything that you need. So it's going to be sustainable. So you need to have a permanent power supply. You need to have good antennas, good reception. Um, and everything you need to maintain the communications. So it's got to be something simple. It's got to be something that can be carried around and it's got to be something that, um, you know, is, like I say, sustainable. So what I've done, I've already opened this all up ready uh, to make things a little bit easier today. So we're starting off then with, with the radio. So the last kit I had, um, we had the radios and the biggest problem I had was when I came to turn the radios on to use, uh, the battery was completely flat and I had no way of powering or charging. Um, luckily, because I was doing it in my car, doing the video in the car, I did have um, a battery eliminator, which I believe I've got in here still. So using a battery eliminator like this, fastens to the back of the, um, the Bofeng radio, and I was able to power up the radio. Um, but that's only because I was in the car. Had I not been in the car, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So, going back to the kit then. So, not much has changed. Um, we're keeping hold of the two Bofeng radios. That's what I've decided I need, two radios. Um, now, again, we're talking about redundancy now. So, whatever we've got as part of the main radio gear in the shack, this is stuff that's kind of left over. So, I've not purposely gone out and bought these Bofeng radios. I happen to have quite a lot of these kind of stashed away anyway. So, that's why we have these. There's nothing here that I've gone out and bought. These are all part of redundancies, okay? So the radios are there. And then these antennas, these are the Goya antennas, the N771s. These are the, uh, the, the, the preferred antenna than the stock antennas. The stock antennas aren't brilliant on these, although the newer ones aren't quite so bad, but the original stock antennas were terrible. They were more like dummy loads. Um, but again, for short, way, uh, for short distance comms, they're fine. But if you want increased, we have these. So one for each radio there. Okay, so then we're looking at microphones. So these little fist microphones or lapel microphones. Uh, push to talk, built-in speaker, really handy to have. Especially if you're driving your car and you want to be able to stick one of these into your glove box or onto a panel on your sun visor. Um, it's probably a little bit easier and safer to be using one of these. Um, also, it's just easier if you're wrapped up with rucksacks and stuff on your back. Again, just clip onto your strap, a lot more, uh, sort of, a lot more sensible, really. So we have two of those. Uh, one's, uh, uh, well, they're both Bofengs. Well, they're both four Bofengs. This one states that it's a Bofeng, but it's not a, a genuine article. Um, are they, so looking at antennas again, another one we have. Now, this is a very small one, this. This is gonna be ideal for seven centimeters but for two meters, uh, probably not very efficient. Um, but again, you've got a nice long cord on this one, nice long feeder cable. Uh, so mag mount, stick on top of your car. Uh, that will help with the comms for one of the cars at least. I don't have two of these. Uh, I'm not gonna buy another one of these. I don't really need one. But the reason I have this in this kit is because I have it and it's not gonna get used anywhere else. So that's part of the kit as well. Um, powering up, okay, so. What we have, we have the desktop chargers, as you can see here. Now, with the desktop chargers, I have a couple of these. These are neat little chargers. These are USB chargers, these are. And what you can do with these is plug them into USB, uh, which is your five volt supply, 
and plug that into your base and that will give you uh, a good charge and that will give you the 12 volt output that you need. So there's obviously a little a step up circuitry inside these plugs that give you that power that you need. Now the current is going to be fairly low so it's not going to charge as fast as it would perhaps if you were to use a genuine charger. However, uh, in the cases where USB is more practicable to use, these chargers will do it nicely. Um, adapters for the car. So, um, I don't know why, this, this one's just like a spare, it's a multi-voltage multi, multi -voltage, uh, cigarette lighter adapter charger. That will power anything really, but again, it will power one of these as well. Um, I've got spare USB cables in here and I have a spare TomTom -tom sat nav. Again, redundancy, this is something I've not used for many, many years because I tend to use Google Maps now on my telephone, it's a lot more simple and it's a lot better. But again, it's there because it's not being used, so why not? And then we have a battery eliminator. Now the battery eliminator is really good. Um, if you don't want to um, waste your battery and you've got a 12 volt supply nearby, um, why not just plug that in? plug it in and go. Um, ideal if you're going to be in the car for a long time. So I only have one of these but that's absolutely fine. And then I've got these coloured crocodile cable lip, uh, leads, the kind of uh, little project leads. Low voltage but um, you never know. For some reason I have them spare so they get thrown in the bag as well along with the other bits and bobs. So moving on, um, if we're going to be inside where there's uh, 240 volt mains or 230 volts, we have these USB adapter plugs. So this will enable me to plug in these leads and charge up using the mains. Um, as well as that, I do have one of these spare uh, proper charger lead cables for one of these anyway, little power supply. So that's a useful thing to have, you never know. Um, bit of uh, power cord, that's useful for um, fastening up antennas into trees. We have the obligatory head torch, which at night time is useful to have. I've got a box here with some spare plugs in. Um, uh, SMA2 PL259 plugs, uh, only one of there in the moment, so there's one being used for another project at the moment, but I'll be back in here very soon. And a little um, E-Trex uh, Garmin sat-nav, a uh, little GPS plotter thing. So that's basically what we have. We're going to move on now and talk about the solar panel. So one of the issues that we had last time was that the battery went flat on the radio and I had no means of charging it. So I had a couple of options. One was to carry quite a few batteries with my spare batteries and another option was to have a portable power supply that would power and charge the batteries up. So redundancies, this is something I've had for quite a long time. It's a portable power bank. It's five volts, two USB outputs on this and it's got a little built-in solar panel as well. Now this solar panel, uh, it's, it's an absolute waste of time. That's never gonna charge any batteries up for you, never in a hurry. Um, but the idea of this is that this will store battery power for you. So I can plug in using these USB charger leads, these two radios, and charge them up via this. This could be charged using um, cigarette light adapters that I have in here to power it from your car. I can also charge it from the solar panel. So this is a 5 volt, 21 watt portable solar panel. It comes quite small and handy and it fits just well in this bag. Now this is something I've had for a couple of years but not really used it very much. It was originally bought off eBay. Um, I think I paid probably about £20 for this, I can't quite remember. But it's very good because it comes with two USB outputs there. So it's fully regulated. So using this, I can plug in the radios directly in to charge these radios, or I can use this to charge up this portable power supply, like so. So whilst camping or whilst on the move or on the go, 
I'm always going to be able to keep this fully charged. And then when the radio's back to the base or wherever we are, the radio's going to be plugged into there to charge them up to keep them charged. There's two outputs there, so I could keep one on charge and uh, keep that on charge at the same time if I wanted to. And the great thing is, if you've got these radios on charge, you can plug in these speaker mics, which means you can keep them in the docking station on charge whilst you're using the radio. Just another option there. I have tried this solar panel out and it works really well. Um, with these radios being completely flat, uh, with a fair amount of sun like we have today, uh, within about 30 seconds straight to where the radios will power up in the docking station and is usable. Uh, very short transmissions at first, but after about half an hour, you're able to have full transmission on these if you wanted to do so. And it didn't create me problems at all, and it worked really well. So this is something that's ideal. Again, this is where the string comes in useful because you can hold these through the little eye holes um, and you can have it pinned up wherever you want to. Uh, very efficient. I've done a few tests with this um, and I'll probably do another video later on to review this in more in depth. But uh, again, this is something that it's, it's part of the kit because it's one of my redundancies. So that fits in nicely. So that's everything that's in the bag. So that fits in, first of all, in the back of the bag. On the front of the bag, oh, to show you this, a um, little screwdriver set. It's got the hexa, I forget what these are called, are the little hexa type screwdriver things. Um, and little flat head and cross heads there. Nice, small, very useful. Redundancy, fits in. So looking at the front of this bag then, this bag was originally um, paid 16 pound I think for this. Uh, it's only a cheap one. It's off, uh, off Amazon. And it's an absolute perfect size for me. So the front compartments here, I keep spare notepad, I keep pens and a little Stanley craft knife. I also keep in a set of instructions for the UV5R radio. I'm very familiar with the radio itself, so having the instructions isn't really a necessity for me. But again, it's just something really good for reference. You never know, it's nice to have. And then on the front, I have spare cigarette lighter to USB adapter plug and spare USB plugs all in there. I've got USB leads that will power your phone as well as the charger and uh, the radios in here. On the side, I keep this Rolson LED torch. That just fits nicely on the side. You never know it's there, just holds on really well. I've got something else in here. Oh yes, insulation tape and the side pockets and spare batteries. So I have triple A's and double A batteries. Um, they will power the torch and my GPS. So they fit in nicely in the side. And that's it really. That's the kit bag. Um, the only other thing to show you is the antenna. So this is, um, uh, it's like a J-Pole ladder antenna that I made. Now this is only tuned into two meter band. Um, I was hoping to make one of these dual band, but I was having a few issues um, and I'm still working on that one now. But uh, this is basically it, a couple of meters long. Um, this could be very easily tied uh, up into a tree, again using the string, fastening it to the top there. Uh, and you can kind of raise it up as high as you want to go. Uh, very useful to have, it's very efficient, it's very effective. Um, and it's nice and portable as well. The only thing I could probably do with is a slightly longer feeder cable onto this. The coax is only a couple of meters long. So you are somewhat restricted to, uh, to how high you can put the antenna up. But that's something that fits in, rolls up just nicely and makes a perfect base station antenna. And that's pretty much it guys and girls. This is, uh, this is what I've been working towards. So quite an improvement from the last video that, um, that I showed you. So, no particular order, but things just get piled back in. One thing I have noticed, it's a good idea to check every now and again, just check all your kit out, make sure that your radios are charged. This is a big failing from last time, one of my learnings. 
every now and again, just open it up, check it, check the battery charts, check the radios haven't turned themselves on, uh, nothing's flat. Because it's all very well being able to charge them uh, straight away like I can, but if you need them straight away, you don't want to have to wait. So it's always worth checking, especially the portable power supply. That's a good one to, uh, to keep charged. Um, and also being able to efficiently use the equipment that you've got. It's all very well having these radios um, and programming them to a frequency and uh, two people going off in different directions being able to talk. But if you don't know how to operate the radios and if you knock it out of channel or off frequency, you need to know how to be able to put it back again. So it's important to be efficient in the use of your radios and all your equipment so you know how to use it. This is a good size bag and it's a great size for the car. Covered in dog hair, but there you go.